Hi, this is Kevin Pulowski from Paradise Found Studio, and today we're going to be covering some really interesting work from Peter Koenig. And uh, he covers a lot of different imagery that you've never seen before. So it's going to be really interesting, so let's get into this. So Peter, thanks for joining us today. Well, thank you for having me. So Peter, how did you get involved with uh, sacred art? So when I was, was at school, I was um, encouraged to do art. And, um, and I thought I'd like to do religious art because we had a very pious family. Your brother's a priest, right? That's right. And then the kind of art I used to see in the church was what, or let's put it this way, what was absent from the Christian art. What we didn't see in the church was the resurrection. We didn't see the miracles of Jesus and his teaching, casting out of spirits, turning out the money changes from the temple, Nothing, no drama. The drama of Jesus' life is only the stations of the cross in most of our churches in England and the crucifixion. So these sort of, there's hundreds of subjects which seem to be missing. And also the richness, the richness of the Bible was missing. A lot of young people have never read it and don't know what's in it. I, I, I wanted to tackle subjects that hadn't been tackled before. And I wanted to do basically as a kind of relationship, a relationship art. God is the is the groom the, the cheap people are the bride so there's a, a dialogue going on between the two of them you know what's interesting is you know the early church the purpose of the artwork in, in, in a great extent is um people couldn't read right so they, they put artwork on the wall to to give people the um, a better understanding it sounds like you're going back to that you know there, there's people aren't reading the bible like maybe they should and you're filling those gaps in with these scenes. That you're quite right, but I'll put it in this way, an imaginative involvement with the stories, imagining yourself involved in them somehow, and not just merely an observer. And so I like the idea of, to put uh, some of the themes in modern dress. Um, I think when you see Roman soldiers in their old costumes, you say, oh, they were like that then. As if, as if sin has vanished. The story is carrying on now. It hasn't stopped. If you like, Christ is persecuted in those Christians in many lands. I, don't know, I believe eight people, are, Christians are murdered a day because they're Christians. 25 of them are put in prison every day. So it's not as if it's the story has, uh, is in the past. It, the, ac the action is in the present. Uh, Christ is living through his people. And the same, if you like, story of the passion is relived in the present. So you're trying to put the people really at a, almost a first person view of things. Yes, well, that's lovely. Yes, that's an excellent way of putting it. Yes, a first person. Read the stories as if you're in them. See, when I painted um, the mocking of Christ in, in military uniform, and contemporary was it's it's no it's not any national uniform it's just simply the kind of army uniform that people wear right round the globe here's an example i'll show you one well it avoids it avoids a political statement doesn't it i don't want to make it a political statement but i want to say that politics and religion are not totally divorced from each other now those soldiers are not dressed in any with their big black boots who I don't know that the soldiers wear big black boots, but it, it's, it isn't identifiable. They're not meant to be identified. It's more striking. And funnily enough, that image is pinched from a film. Gran Torino, lovely. That's me. And I pinched this for, for that scene where, because he in the end becomes a kind of Christ-like figure because he, he, he's shot. And by being shot, he, he exposes the criminal. Now, this is quite a different subject. This is why a mountain, now the holy mountain, is where Moses met God and he talked to him. Now, this holy mountain I put in the Garden of Paradise because it was where um, man first, or Moses first, talked to him. And in the garden, which is the sort of, you can see that, uh, so it's quite a different subject, but it's, 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 it's another aspect of, uh, of the Bible. It's, 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 it's rich variety. So in the middle of the garden, there is the bride, and she pierces the, 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 the deer. Now, in the Song of Solomon, the, the bride calls the bridegroom, my beloved is like a gazelle 
leaping on the mountains, bounding over the hills. She describes him to a gazelle. She could have said that, that a lamb, but she, it is the church or the bride that strikes the bridegroom, pierces the bridegroom, and the life and the spirit is released to the world. Anyway, I want, I, I want that to be a meditation about the crucifixion without actually uh, uh, being on a cross, but him actually being pissed, you know, being attacked, uh, struck with something. I'm connecting, I'm connecting the Song of Solomon with Christ's crucifixion in that, and also Moses on the, on the, on the holy mountain, I'm connecting a, a bigger, more, a more global picture. Right, Kevin, here's another one taking up the same theme. The holy mountain, terribly important, where Moses meets God. But really it's the people of God who meet God on the mountain. That gazelle at the bottom is more to do with, my, um, like a deer that thirsts for running water, so my soul is thirsting for you. That's, that's where that pe is, is more of a connection. The, the bride, the people of God, strike the rock, which is Christ, which is again Paul, Paul's letter. This is what I might say in the concordance in the Bible. It has all these cross references of how um, Paul links all these sorts of things to the Messiah, to Christ. So I'm thinking of the mountain as Jesus, because he is now the rock that was struck by the bride, the church, the people, the people of God, the Jewish people, the people of God, and now the Christian people. You're meant to see the connections. It's, it's as if there's a long story, a long odyssey, starting with Abraham, wandering through the desert, looking for the gate to paradise, which ends up being Christ crucified. So it's that journey, the journey towards it. So we're on the Song of Solomon. So while we're on that, I'm just kind of curious on the symbolism I'm seeing. I'm looking at behind your veil. Uh, but, you know, you, you repeat some of that. Now, what the over their eyes, you, you do a lot of uh, the, 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 it looks like a dove over the eyes. What, what's the meaning behind that? The, the poem itself, you know, I, I haven't invented any of that, that. It's in the Song of Solomon. It says in it here, your eyes are doves. Oh, it's right there. Eyes are doves, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> How'd I miss that? Yeah, it says... Um, and you see, my, my beloved is like a gazelle leaping on the mountains, bounding over the hills. I, is it a sexy? Is it a sexy poem? This is the question, which, which my, people are very often say. They look at the, the Song of Solomon. Is it about it? No. Look, a man and woman relationship. The, the key one for us human beings, humanity. This is the other thing I missed a bit in the um, church art. Where is the feminine? Where is the fem? Mary embodies the feminine, but she mod uh, um, she uh, mod uh, uh, rolls it mainly as the mother. Where is the bride? Where is the where is the bride? Uh, let's have another bit. I've added a painting of your hair is like a flock of goats frisking down the mountains of Gilead. Lovely sign. I've got her. Uh, the hair is goats running down the mountains. Terrific image. Uh, talk about your art influences. Um, you know, I'm looking at your work. I, I'm not a you know art historian, but you know, I, in in England, uh, you know, I'm seeing a, a little bit of William Blake in your work. I don't know if that it, that's truly an influence. Yep. yep, what, yep. Who do you see as your influences in, in terms of your art? I mean, an artist looks at other art. I expect I expect artists to look at other people's art. So I would say I'm influenced by hundreds of artists. I can't name them all. You, you, you. William Blake is one of them, yes, yeah, sure. But he doesn't appear, shall we say, in the Song of Solomon, which you just saw. He might, he might appear in another painting I did of Elijah and Elisha, where Elijah's riding off in her chariot. Yes, I'd say there's an, inf an, uh, inf um, an aspect of Blake in, in, in that painting. But in that painting which we did of of uh, the, the holy mountain in the garden of paradise you would have to say that's is influenced by the miniatures the miniature schools of people painted wonderfully uh, intricate little paintings uh, in the bible in the bibles and uh, it's much more influenced by that so you you'd find various influences and here's here's another one i don't know where, what what would be the influence on a thing like this and that's that's a new piece right yes it's a new piece it's it's Jeremiah, who's being thrown into the pit because he's saying that if they don't surrender, that the city will be destroyed. He's asking them to do something which they don't like doing. The Jews must surrender. 
They don't want to surrender. And he said, then God will look after them and it'll be okay. So they are saying, no, we're not going to, you know, you're, you're a troublemaker. You're telling, you're, you're, you're a defeatist. The result was that Jerusalem was conquered and it was destroyed and a lot of people were murdered. Turned out true. Turned out true what he said anyway. <laughs> he prophesied accurately. Peter, there's, there's so much tradition in Christian artwork, you know, whether it's iconography or other types of art, a lot of times there, there seems to be rules and certain symbology that carries through, you know, the hundreds and hundreds of years, yet you're breaking away from that. I'm really seeking for what are the rules for this age? What are the ones that will communicate uh, the gospel and the truth? What will communicate the truth of Christ's um, save, God-saving work best press the relationship between God and his creation best. I mean, I think that's what I'd say. And you, and you could have any number of styles to do that. I like this one. Right, Kevin. Oh, so it's Mary and, um, and Elizabeth. That's right. And uh, my mother was thought, my mother thought that it was going a bit too far to show the babies like this, but and nowadays, everybody knows down to the last detail. So how long ago was that painted? 67. Yeah, I suppose that might 19... be provocative in the 60s, but uh, yeah, yeah, this day and age, yeah, not at all. Well, not anymore, no. Not anymore, you're right. So uh, well, b before you put that away, though, uh, so the style is, is very different than uh, a lot of your others. Is this more of an experimental phase, or is this a style that fits the... Um, because it looks stained, it, it kind of harkens to like stained glass. Yes, it's more like this, this Georges Rouault. You would say there's an influence of Georges Rouault in okay. this. So were, so were you experimenting or is this the right technique for the piece? Yes, trying out things, trying out styles, yes. When you're doing the, the, the paintings themselves, if we go back to uh, the, the, the painting of casting dice for the for the garment of Christ. You start off with lots of scribbles. And then you do a life-size drawing of it. So Peter, this has been great. Uh, I really love this work and it's been really interesting hearing all these details about uh, your work. So thanks a lot. Kevin, I've enjoyed uh, uh, meeting you and getting to know you. Thank you for all your question. Thanks for joining us. I appreciate it. If you like this, please hit like and even better subscribe. We're trying to build our subscriber base. Peter's information, his website is in the details below. And of course, my information is there as well. Thank you and God bless.